Hello, hello, hello again. Welcome back to another video. Um, today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about, actually, a subscriber asked this question in uh, uh, my videos, videos, videos video, and uh, I thought I'd bring it to uh, your all's attention because it was a great comment, and it's something that I know is uh, definitely hard and is a hard subject for a lot of people to uh, cover and is a hard subject for a lot of, uh, of families and whatnot. And uh, that comment was asking, <clears throat> how, uh, how do I uh, financially support my family? Um, and it is a definitely difficult task uh, to do while you're away at your basic training. Uh, you're worried about your family and you're worried about uh, uh, supporting them financially. Um, for all of you that have uh, families out there that are going away, it doesn't matter if it's a spouse or kids, and you want to support them, um, I, I thought I'd give you my two cents on uh, on the subject. But before I jump in, uh, dive in any, any thir further, don't forget to like the video, comment down below, and um, subscribe uh, as uh, we're starting to ramp up production. Uh, you guys are helping us a lot, um, giving us great ideas that we're adding to our lists, and uh, we're knocking them off as uh, best as we can, um, in as order, as orderly as we can, and uh, yeah, so... Supporting your fa family financially is definitely a challenge. While you're at your basic training, you are not getting your full military salary um, because a lot of your 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 pay is going towards your room and board and your food uh, at whatever training base you're doing your your training at, um, and that's a lot of money that gets taken off. Um, that money is held though, and you will get reimbursed for it uh, once you have actually completed your training. Um, it will show back up on your pay and it can be a lot of money. Um, for me, I got like $3,000, um, which definitely helped out because uh, I wasn't pulling in $3,000 while I was there. Uh, I was pulling in maybe 200, 300 maybe a, maybe a week, maybe every two weeks. So definitely something you want to think about. Um, what I highly suggest is that you and your spouse or you and whoever is looking after your, uh, your dependents definitely sit down way 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 in advance like right when you s send your uh, letter application in i suggest that you start saving as much money as you can put it in a savings account don't invest it none of that put your money into a savings account or keeping your checkings but just start saving as much as you can because you don't know how long you're going to be away for you it, it says 10 weeks but there's also quarantine. What happens if you get sick? You got to think about what happens if you get injured and you're on course for a lot longer than just 10, than just 10 weeks. So definitely think about your financial situation and definitely think about the money that you're bringing in, the money that your dependent is bringing in, your spouse, whatever. All that definitely helps. Start putting aside money. Start thinking about how stuff is going to get paid for while you're away. If you're the financial, financially responsible person in whatever relationship that you have, you got to start, I guess, teaching or transferring that information to your dependent. Because when you're on your course, you don't really have a lot of access to a lot of financial help. Um, you do have some time, but it's you, you, you won't have time. You will be too busy dealing with basic training you'll be too daily busy you'll be too busy dealing with your course to actually think about finances finances and finances are a huge stressor and if you let it get to you it's definitely going to hinder your possibility of performing well on your course um, this doesn't just apply for basic training uh, this applies for all types of trade training that you end up doing any courses that you end up going on you got to be able to understand how much money is going to be coming into you, how much money is going to be leaving all your finances, and you want to have a nice kind of safe zone of money. So like they normally say, you want three months of rent in your savings account, three months worth of rent always in your savings, just in case something happens, you lose your job or whatever. I say you keep there, so you do that. Whatever you're renting, you're paying for a mortgage, anything, put all that, start putting away as much money as you can, um, just in case you're gone longer, just in case you're not getting paid you're, what you're used to getting paid uh, each month. Start putting money aside as much as you can. Same with your dependent, your spouse, whoever. 
put all that money aside, start saving and kind of getting ready for hibernation, as I would say. Um, you, you don't, it's hard for me to say because I can't say a lot of information to you guys. Um, there's a lot of stuff that I'm not um, allowed to say. So I'm trying to keep this as simple and, and short and to the point as possible. Um, financially supporting your family while you're gone. The money that you're bringing in is not a lot while you're away on, on your basic training. And you definitely have to 100% think about and plan for only getting to just plan for only getting about it's hard to say 500 maybe try planning you're only getting $500 a month you're gone for two months two and a half months only plan for about $500 a month is what you're going to be bringing in while you're at basic training now however much your rest of your bills are don't really include that $500 probably take half of that and put it in your bills and the rest of that just kind of save because when you get out you're going to be probably paying for stuff that you didn't weren't able to pay while you're away um i know that while i was doing my basic training um i, I knew people that were single and had apartments and whatnot they ended up um either selling their homes selling their apartments or um canceling their their lease and moving all their stuff into a storage unit um which is a lot cheaper option um for you guys um that are doing that, putting it into a storage unit uh, definitely will help you save money and you don't have to worry about paying rent and all that stuff. Um, personal story from my side, um, I didn't have that issue. I know it sucks to say, but and I, I don't like saying it, but I didn't have that issue of worrying about supporting um, Jade, who was pregnant at the time. Um, she had, we we're living with my, with my parents because we knew that I was going to be gone for a while. We didn't know where we'd end up, um, essentially. So she was living with my parents for the, those uh, two and a half months. It was very, very rough on her. Um, it, it, there was some issues that arose from it. It was very rough, but we were, we were happy we, we did what we did because we really did not know uh, where, where I was going to end up um, after my basic training. We, I could have been ended, ended up at really anywhere. Um, but I was luckily, I was fortunate to be posted back uh, to my hometown um, for a little bit uh, while I waited my, my next uh, training. Um, and in that time, we did end up going and getting an apartment because we were able to, my, my proper finances were able to come through um, with how much money I was making um, at the time, um, about a month, two months after I got out of my uh, basic training. And like I said, finance, finance is the biggest stressor on everybody. Uh, it's a stressor on us, stressor on anybody you talk to, unless you're some rich billionaire that doesn't have to really worry about that. For most people, and most people joining, finances and money is the reason why you're kind of joining, and also to serve your country. But don't expect to be pay, getting paid a lot of money or the salary that you see online when you go onto line and you see how much uh, average military person makes. Um, there is that, they do show for like privates and whatever, how much pay you get, but you're not gonna be bringing that home a month. You also gotta realize that there's taxes put on that. There is uh, uh, benefits taken off from that. So financially speaking, save as much money as you can it's the best way to support whoever you're supporting and the person that you're doing this with or the person that you're actually going to be supporting tell them and sit down with them and go over your finances see how much money you can put away and save as much as possible um, so that they're able to take care of it while you're gone because you won't be able to um, you can try but it's going to take too much time out of your day it's going to be a huge stressor for you that you do not need an already stressful environment uh, that you're going to be in. You need to separate kind of, while you're there, you need to separate civilian life and only focus on what's the minute, the hour, the day while, while you're there. You can't think about a civilian life until you're on the phone at the end of the day talking to your, talking to, uh, your loved ones, your friends, whoever you want to talk to. Um, your finances should be the least of your worries. It should be something that you're taking care of before you even go. It should be something 
thought about a couple months in advance. You should have, before you even think about joining, you should already start having a baseline of money saved up because even after basic training, you don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know if you're going to be, uh, let's say you're from Gander, Newfoundland. Let's say you're from the other side of the country and uh, you join a, a unit and you're posted on Vancouver Island. You know, on the other side of the country and you're, let's say you're moving your dependents and your spouse and everybody over there because uh, it just so happens that your uh, trade training is going to be taking place there or it could be your course isn't starting for a year or that's going to be your hard posting. Also expect that after your basic training you're going to be posted somewhere and uh, your spouse and dependents aren't going to be coming with you. So you've got to think about where you're going to be living which will probably be on base in the shacks and that is a couple hundred bucks a month to live in shacks plus your food and uh, if you want a vehicle which I don't suggest you guys getting a vehicle while you're living in shacks um, you're going to want you're going to be paying for that on top of whatever you're paying to, for your family also at the end so you got to think about that you're not always going to go right back to where where you joined you could be going com a completely different location and you just have to be so lucky to be in the same area that you joined like you're one of the few lucky ones like I was um but you got to think about that it's not just basic training you got to think after basic training waiting for your career course once you've completed your career course and you're hard posted, and what I say is a hard posting, is a hard posting is your first real posting to a place. Like I was posted out of my basic training to uh, Victoria. Um, that was my hard posting there while I awaited for my training, which ended up being in Ontario. Um, and then after that, after the, I waited a year for my for my course. I waited a year and a half for my course after basic training. And then I got posted uh, to the post that I have now. And that's been two years, almost, was it a year and a half, two years out of basic training that I got my actual first hard posting. And uh, that was something I definitely thought about because I didn't know if I was going to end up back in uh, Victoria or if I was going to end up in somewhere else, like if I was going to end up in Ontario or Alberta. and. We had the financial support that we I could have moved my family where I needed them because we didn't know how long it was going to take. Um, but that's also a gamble. You could move, you could uproot and completely move your family across the country to wherever you're uh, waiting training and get an apartment or whatever, get a house, and then you could be posted two months later to a completely different location. And then you got to uproot your family again and move. People that join the military that have dependents who have spouses I use these words dependents and spouses because I don't 100% know what all you guys are like and what you have going on in your life and I don't want to make it personal with you yeah so like I was saying sorry we're Amelia's back home yeah so we have the hardest um time with with excuse you we have the hardest time with uh, uh with financially supporting our, our families in the first little bit. Uh, once you get more experience, and it gets easier. Once you get more time in, it gets easier, and all the promotions and pay raises and stuff. But for financially supporting your your your, your family or whoever while you're away on courses all solely depends on how ready you are by the time you leave. And, uh, and, and everything's put in place prior before you going. So it's all about, like I've said, getting those, um, getting all your finances in order, making sure whoever you're with there has, is, is capable and able and understands that they're gonna be, have to be the ones paying the bills and, and, and doing all that. Um, just saving your money and getting prepared for, for what's to come. Um, and, it just, just you gotta realize you're not gonna make a whole bunch of money while you're there, and you're not gonna have a whole bunch of time to be sorting out your finances, um, which does make it hard. So, just save as much money as you can is the best advice that I can give you. Save your money and uh, start getting rid of stuff that's not like that you don't need to spend money on, like. Excessive shopping, stuff like that. Start 
compiling as much money as you can as a backup and start saving. If you have to tap into your savings, I mean, the money that you get back from basic training will definitely help us uh, cover those costs uh, later on. So you, so you, if you do have to uh, use your savings to survive the time while you're away, uh, it's the only real bet um, if you have so much you got to pay for. And yeah, I think that's all I'm going to say about this. If you have any more questions about this, uh, if you have any more, if you want to know any more personal things uh, that I can't say on here, definitely go and uh, send us a message over on our Instagram, uh, Duncan underscore Dades underscore YouTube, um, underscore IG, sorry. And uh, uh, I can answer as much uh, questions over there as possible. Um, try to help you out uh, personally. I mean, I'm not a, I'm, I do the finances here, but I'm not very, like, I've never been trained in finance. I, I just know what works for us and what has worked in the past. Um, yeah, and I, I try to be finance, financially responsible now, but I, I don't do a very good job at it. So, uh, yeah, if you have any more questions or comments, uh, please put them down below. And don't forget to like this video and uh, subscribe. And, uh, yeah, uh, don't forget to check out our other old videos. And uh, we will see you in the next. Amelia. So guys, thank you so much for watching. And uh, we'll see you in the next.